Under the Khmer Rouge, Cambodians faced forced labor, starvation, and murder. In three years, eight months, and 20 days, nearly two million people were killed. From 1965 to 1973, the United States dropped almost three million tons of bombs on Cambodia. The targets were supply lines for the North Vietnamese Army and Khmer Rouge guerrilla forces. But thousands of civilians were killed, and Cambodia, officially neutral in the Indochina War, was dragged into the violence. Cambodia is the Nixon doctrine in its purest form. In Cambodia, what we are doing is helping the Cambodians to help themselves. The people go forward and fire. Bang! 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 Civil war raged as the U.S. equipped Cambodian military battled the communist Khmer Rouge. The shadowy guerrillas soon controlled the countryside and finally laid siege to the capital, Phnom Penh. The first order of the Khmer Rouge was to evacuate all cities. Everyone, young and old, healthy and sick, was sent to the countryside. Phnom Penh was left empty overnight. Year zero began. The people were forced into slave labor. Millions died from starvation, overwork, and execution. Murder and fear were the tools of this brutal revolution. Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge targeted the educated for execution. Professionals like doctors, engineers, monks, and students were forced to hide their skills and farm with Stone Age methods. Few survived. The years of horror ended in 1979 as Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge were finally chased out of power. But Cambodia's troubles were not over. The Khmer Rouge had left behind a land of starving, traumatized survivors. The reconstruction of society began even as the unrepentant murderers fought from jungle hideouts against the new government. Today, after decades of civil war, political isolation, and corrupt government, Cambodia is a nation at peace and in recovery. One in three people live on less than 50 cents a day. The infant mortality rate is the highest in Southeast Asia. Schools and hospitals are barely functional. Scars from the brutal past are visible everywhere. The rebuilding that is necessary after losing entire generations to war and mass murder is only now beginning. But dedicated individuals, both Cambodian and foreign, have stepped forward to be a part of the country's rebirth. They are bringing the crucial skills and training that the ravaged nation desperately needs. A lot of the details of this I really didn't know or understand until I traveled to Cambodia. But when I realized that close to two million people had perished. And here we were exclaiming that this would never happen again. I said, I'm gonna do something. Don't know what I'm gonna do or how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do something. And so I just started learning and helping and learning and helping. And uh, that has become what I do today, which is the work of Build Cambodia. based not-for-profit that works to strengthen civil society. We raise awareness of the country's needs, 
We coordinate support from abroad for organizations within Cambodia. We directly support organizations as a donor. We lead fact-finding tours to introduce people who want to make a difference to organizations that are doing just that. Cambodia's desperate need for human resources means that giving your time, your expertise, and your compassion can make a significant difference here. The Angkor Hospital for Children and the Cambodian Children's Fund are positive examples of organizations founded through compassion and dedication. Both receive support from Build Cambodia and are visited on our fact-finding tours. Medical professionals were targeted under the Khmer Rouge, and the healthcare system remains in tatters. In 1999, Kinro Izu, a traveling photographer, was shocked by Cambodia's lack of pediatric care. He decided to help and founded the Angkor Hospital for Children, which has since given free professional care to over 180,000 children. Uh, that child has a uh, very severe lung infection, yeah. Oh. Yeah, very severe bronchiolitis. Yeah. She needs to be here for a while. Senior pediatrician Dr. Pisse has worked at Angkor Hospital for four years. In addition to providing clinical care, Dr. Pisse also conducts research and tutors junior staff. Pop-up A, B, C, classification of, of asthma. Right? But you have to exclude other causes of wheezing. Right? As the country rebuilds its shattered medical system, clinical care and training is desperately needed. Build Cambodia brings potential volunteers and donors to see the situation firsthand. Angkor Hospital is providing health care for the next generation of Cambodians while educating the country's next generation of doctors. Say, ah, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> see, see. Okay, much better, yeah? Under Pol Pot's rule, Thousands of teachers and students were sentenced to death. Today, education is a luxury not all families can afford. Due to poverty, many children are forced to work instead of studying. The Cambodian Children's Fund provides an opportunity for the poorest of the poor to learn. The garbage dump is where most of our kids come from, over 70%. It's um, the city's only garbage dump. Kids work there in the most toxic circumstances. They're picking through garbage, looking for uh, metals, hard plastics, anything they can find um, to make enough money to buy the food. It's impossible to describe what it's like until you're there. It just shook me so much. The original plan I had when I first moved here was to get 25 children off the street into a place to be educated, given healthy meals, and be secure. I was living in the States and traveling back here every month before, um, before I realized that this is where I wanted to be. So I quit my job and moved here. Today we have 235 children um, under our care. Sok Chieta is one of those 235 kids. She attends CCF thanks to her sponsor, who met her during a Build Cambodia immersion trip. ເອີຮຽນສົ່ງເຕີນາກົດ <coughs> We have come across some remarkable organizations and remarkable ordinary people that got over there and got involved with no qualifications. They just wanted to make a difference. 
If you decide to go over to Cambodia and get involved, you will make a difference in people's lives. Your skills and compassion will make a difference here. Learn more. Join our fact-finding missions. Contact Build Cambodia so that we can help match your time, talents, and donations to our network of organizations working to bring Cambodia a better future.